and welcome to this week's News Bulletin Roundup at the International News Channel. Let's take a look at the headlines. 39 miners trapped for over 36 hours in Northern Ontario. Imran Khan continues to await a phone call from U.S. President Joe Biden. French President Emmanuel Macron urges Europe to stop being naive when it comes to military development. Pfizer obtains a favorable result for COVID-19 vaccination on children. Chancellor Mohammed Ashraf Gharad bans women from attending Kabul University. The Atlanta spa shooting terrorist pleads not guilty for four murders. Man charged with the murder of London teacher Sabina Nessa. R. Kelly convicted in sex trafficking trial. As of 10 a.m. September 28th, 33 of the 39 miners who were trapped underground climbed to the surface with help of rescuers. The rest are expected to be saved by 11 a.m. on Tuesday. Miners escaped using ladders, some of which reached down a length of 1,200 meters. Those who were unable to climb the length of these ladders will be brought up with the support of ropes. In other news, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has complained to the media that the U.S. President Joe Biden has not called him. During a daily briefing this week, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki was asked if there were any plans for a call between Biden and Khan. Her response was that she did not have any predictions as of yet. Moreover, she pointed out that U.S. officials have been in contact with the leaders in Pakistan. Finally, Saki highlighted the importance of not overreading a phone call between leaders. Um, so taking you back in time to Friday, as President Biden was mid meeting with Prime Minister Modi, the Prime Minister of Pakistan took to the stage at the UN and delivered some scathing criticism of the US's actions in Afghanistan. And he's lamented the lack of direct engagement between himself and President Biden. So I was just wondering if, why hasn't the President used this aggressive diplomacy to answer that call from the Prime Minister of Pakistan to engage directly. To be in touch directly with the with uh, the leader of Pakistan? We have been in touch uh, at very high levels with leaders in Pakistan, from the State Department, uh, from the Department of Defense, and uh, from other key components of the administration. The President has not spoken with every foreign leader at this point in time. That is absolutely true. Uh, but he, of course, has a team, an expert team, deployed to do exactly that. So I would say that we are continuing to uh, work together and uh, work on, on initiatives where we can, make clear where we have concern, but I wouldn't overread into a leader-to-leader -leader call in that particular regard. We have high-level engagement from the State Department, Defense Department, and others at this point in time. Point soon. I don't have anything to predict at this point in time. Uh, if they do a call, we will, of course, read it out to all of you. Over in France, French President Emmanuel Macron has told Europe to stop being naive in defending their interests and developing their military. This comment comes after AUKUS, a security pact between the U.S., the U.K., and Australia. AUKUS has resulted in Australia cancelling a multi-billion dollar deal for French-made submarines in favour of U.K. and U.S. submarine technology. Macron argues that Europe, though historically great allies with the U.S., must display its own capacity to protect itself. He argues that the U.S. is a self-interested nation, and so they, Europeans, must take a lead in their own protection. In other news, Pfizer and Biotech are nearing authorization for children to receive the COVID-19 vaccination. They have been conducting trials where participants will receive two 10-microgram doses. So far, the data, which has been submitted to the Food and Drug Administration, find that children aged 5 to 11 can safely receive the vaccine. The companies plan to submit a request for an emergency use authorization for these ages in the near future. Turning now to Afghanistan. The new Taliban-appointed chancellor of Kabul University has disallowed women to attend the school until the work environment becomes more Islamic. He has tweeted that they will not be able to return until those conditions have been met. This same chancellor has also suggested that he will be appointing more pro-Muslim scholars. Moreover, he has criticized the recent education system in Afghanistan for lacking scientific and religious robustness. Instead, he argues, these places of education are hubs for prostitution and moral corruption. Over in the United States, Robert Aaron Long, the 22-year-old man who pleaded guilty for four counts of murder in Cherokee County, has pleaded not guilty on charges of murder, aggravated assault, and domestic terrorism, and the resulting death of four other victims in Atlanta. Long has asserted that his acts of terror were motivated by shame related to his sexual urges, but many have been angered by his comments. Turning now to London. 
A 36-year-old man has been charged with murdering Sabina Nessa in southeast London. He was arrested this past weekend and will appear in court on Tuesday. The victim, Nessa, was 28 years old when she was killed. She was walking from her home to a local pub where she was to meet her friends. However, she never made it to them. Instead, her body was found next day in a nearby park. Lastly, R. Kelly was convicted in a sex trafficking trial this past Monday. A jury made of seven men and five women found the disturbed musician guilty on all nine counts brought against him. Prosecutors argued that his managers and others who helped R. Kelly to meet these young girls and who allowed them to be abused for years amounts to a criminal enterprise. That's all for today. You're watching the International News Channel. I'm Ava Blackwell. Remember to subscribe, like, and turn on the bell notifications so that you don't miss out on any of our latest content.